sun's out which and it's literally just come out so 30 seconds ago I was all set to go and now I can't see anything not complaining sun hee hee so good afternoon to you all oh, this is Bob's number two someone said you can't see my eyes it's like yes you can they're blue so dark glasses Oh, it was another wonderful week here in the Sid Valley. Luna's nice and quiet today. She's um, not having a little moan. Have a new mic. And um, hopefully this one's a little better than it was last week. So what's then happening? Well, I had to drive to um, Honiton, which is about eight and a half miles over the hill. If, uh, we're down at sea level, so you've got to climb up to about 800 feet and then down the other side. Um, over the over the ridges there. It's actually not a bad drive actually. You go through Sibri, which is really nice, and Sidford, which is okay. <laughs> you can't say um, with a Devon accent. You can't say Sibford. No, can't say Sibford. Got to say Sidford. Oh, absolutely. Oh, rather. Now you've got to say Sidford rather than Sidford, which is what it's always been called. Anyway, right. So there I am driving in my wonderful little camper van with the hound in the back who's, who's down there maybe we'll get a shot of her later um, so there I am off to Sidford um, and then off up to Honiton there's roadworks oh there's always roadworks um, on the Sidford Sibri road anyway so they got these lights and they're traffic controlled so Going up towards Honiton, no problems. Stopped, red light came on, no one else is coming down the road and went through the roadworks as we do. And uh, got to Honiton, did my business. Actually, I had to go to Tesco's, but <laughs> sorry, <laughs> us Waitrose dwellers. Yeah. Well, at least it's not MS. Good Lord, got shouted at in an MS. I've got a hearing disability. And this woman behind the towel, the till, let me just readjust my, there we go. She, she said, hello, she said something to me and I didn't hear her and I was looking at her and she said, I said, good morning. <laughs> Seriously, this is what she said. She, she started screaming. There's all these people in the line staring at me and I, 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 I looked and she said, I said, good morning. And this is uh, Marks and Spencer's for you. And I said, you have to talk at me, I'm really deaf, I got blown up. And she was, well, I said good morning! And it's like the manager came across and I said, you can't treat people like this. And they took her off the till and she was having a bad day. But because I didn't say good morning back, the world was, yeah, it was all against her. So there you go. Right, let's go back. Sorry, I had to go to uh, Tesco's today, uh, a couple of days ago. And... Uh, I had to buy a SIM card for my little ASDL router. We've got an outside broadcast going on. Ah, I'm out of sync. I am. Never mind, I'll have to adjust that in post. Anyway, right, so um, there I am. Um, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to stop it and resync the sound. I'll be. Uh, no, I too. I'll just keep it going. Uh, so there, I, I got to um, got to Tesco's, got me um, SIM card, nice little SIM card, ten quid, and uh, the bloke says, uh, "Oh, you want a Tesco's SIM card?" I went, "No, thanks." What network is it on? He says, "Oh, it's on O2." I says, "I've got an O2 SIM card. It doesn't work in Sidmouth. You get like half a meg download speed." No, 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 no. You get 4G. I said, "Yeah, you might get 4G, but you only get half a meg download speed. It's really bad." Until recently, we had no O2 in Sidmouth at all, which was a bit of a pain. Which way do I need to go that way? So, yeah, we've got uh, no O2 in Sidmouth, and even though it's really bad. So I've got a Lycra Mobile, which is either EE or T-Mobile. Anyway, it works fine. So I got back. So anyway, the whole point of the matter is, is that I am driving back. And uh, we've got this um, Roadworks, I'm at the Roadworks, which is where I started off in the story in the first place. So, and uh, we're waiting and all of a sudden the lights go green and I'm at the front. 
and there's still cars coming down and I know for a fact that the lights are in sync so I'm going to put put some footage up of this what happened so you can see this wonderful chap who's decided to ignore completely the fact that it's red but ah, never mind I'll just go through anyway and we've got green lights and there you can see him coming down and he's trying to you can always see when they're guilty because they won't look at you and they'll look away so they're driving along and it's like <laughs> got you on camera so I've got a dash cam so there you go oh it's a wonderful day absolutely brilliant although um, Devon roads are renowned for being absolutely awful yeah Devon roads are pretty pretty bad they're like the size of my lurcher they're tiny and yeah, a couple of years ago, uh, I was coming back from Ottery St. Mary, which is the other side of the hills there. Really beautiful place. I've been out for a walk down towards Budley. Uh, great, great sounding names, Budley. I do like that, Budley. Anyway, um, on the way back, um, there's one of these campers, auto-sleeping campers in the field, or on the road, sorry. And uh, he'd taken up the whole road, and there was another one going the other way. So these two, and uh, there was a long line of traffic behind each one, and none of these two were giving in. I just got the paper out and started reading it, and uh, eventually one of them backed up, which meant the whole line had to back up. Was, you know, these these roads are not built for auto sleeping campers; they have to go all the way round. But no, no, we'll go this way because it's um, yeah, you know what I mean. Mm, you do. Anyway, so that's all sorted. He says, scratching his ear. So, my, look at that, my glasses are getting so dark now. It's getting really bright. I tried putting the camera in different places, but it just didn't work. We have um, a spider. Absolutely massive thing. I'll, I'll show you some pictures of it. There you go. So, this is our house spider. Oh, actually, it's a big, big thing. Not bigger than a house spider. And we had a delivery this week. And uh, this, I was, oh. This is um, a council house behind me, nice council house. But the, uh, the doors on the sinks have all fallen off because they're just rotting and they won't replace them. So uh, I said, I'm in from half past 12. And at half past 12, actually about 25 past 12, he was standing at the door. It didn't ring, didn't knock, because if he had done the lurcher would have started barking. And then he's disappearing. So I opened the door and went, yes, can I help you? Oh, I didn't think you were in. I said, well, you didn't knock. He said, well, I did. And I said, you didn't, because watch. And I knocked on the door and caused the lurcher. Roo, roo, roo. And I said, well, that's, that would have happened. Oh, well, uh, um, well, I'm here now. So he came in and um, just as he was coming in, he saw this spider. I mean, it really is, as you've seen, a really huge thing. He said, oh, I don't like spiders. Let me kill it. I said, no, don't do that. It's beautiful. Keeps the... Uh, flies down you know because there was i've got a picture of it nibbling on this <laughs> rather large fly um sucking all its insides out and um he's oh i don't like spiders i said you're nearly six foot tall you're a big chap how can you be so scared of something the size of my thumb and he's, oh, i don't like spiders i said well he's doing fine he's killing all the all the flying things for us and he was like oh i don't want you to kill it and I was like no you can't kill spiders I know there's a lot of people out there who think, oh, got to kill spiders. My, my lovely ex-wife, and we were sitting at home one day up in London, and uh, we just had the floor laminated, beautiful floor, and really nice, it looked, looked stunning. And uh, I'm sitting there on this seat, and out the corner of my eye, this spider, quite a big house spider, started wandering along the... the uh, the corner where it meets the floor and the wooden panel, whatever you want to call it, palmet, something. <clears throat> I don't know. And it started wandering along this wooden floor line. And I thought, you're going to be okay because he's quite camouflaged. No, the spider decided to commit suicide by wandering straight across the floor in front of the television. Oh my word. There were screams standing on the sofa. Uh, kill it, kill it. No, I'm not killing it. So I said, I'll go and get a cup and I'll take it outside. 
And this is what I did. So I put a jug over it and put some paper underneath. You know, you had to put the thing underneath and, and took it outside and rehoused it. And she was shaking, Ditto was shaking. <laughs> Do like spiders? Maybe she got bit by a spider when she was a young one. You now my neighbour's coming in now. So, yeah. Hiya. Oh, Luna's off. Right, so, yeah, don't like spiders. So he, he definitely wanted to try and kill my spider. And that was not going to happen. Beautiful day. I mean, there's going to be 20 degrees this weekend. 20 degrees. Can you believe that? Down here, I mean, it might be wherever you are. It might be a damn sight hotter. But 20 degrees on the coast. Absolutely brilliant. And I'm going to go down to Kenilworth House tomorrow. Um, we have a science festival in Sidmouth. And the science festival is... Um, we're doing an outside broadcast. Sid Valley Radio. S-I-D Valley Radio. You can't... iPhone, Android, free apps. You can listen in. Uh, anyway, so we're there doing a, <coughs> um, a, an outside broadcast. Of course, when you see this, it will be gone, so don't try and listen. But we are there all the time. So there we are, we're going to go down, and we've got all these kids who will come around and try and take all the badges, and we've got these little Sid Valley Radio badges and stickers. And they cost an absolute fortune, but never mind. And they'll be wearing them around, and then you'll see them all on, <laughs> on the ground, <laughs> stuck to things. So yeah, Sid Valley Radio. We're doing outside, but I don't like doing outside broadcasts got this little clip on mic which uh you know you, you sound like a dialect actually but um, it's pretty good so beautiful clear skies beautiful evening uh, what else can i tell you about this week dog's feeling good dog nearly bit me <laughs> just like what she's never bit me before and she's just suddenly well we've got this cat and uh she's she's okay with the cat and then all of a sudden she started to go so i said well luna what are you doing and she looked at me and went and i went no and she put her head down she has an inbuilt clock all these 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 lurchers have got inbuilt clocks so at half past six she knows it's dinner time and at nine o'clock at night she gets a treat and that treat is um what we're we talking about um just a piece of dry duck breast or something you know you get these bags of good boy but nine o'clock she'll sit there and all of a sudden she's looking at you what is it oh it's nine o'clock yeah got to talk to you out now <laughs> it's always a bloody same with the dog yeah I'm, I'm i'm just the person who gives her food at least the cat in my in my studio in my room we've got this um cat litter tray and this cat is looking at you going and it's like, oh my word, what have you eaten? So you have to get rid of it. If you've got cats, you understand. With dogs, they're like, yeah, we understand you and we want to be with you. Cats are just like, yeah, next time. Just give me food or I won't scratch you. And it's just, just like that, you know. She, you can, oh, hello, and if you want to play, this is the cat, and you know, t tickle my stomach, and you tickle the stomach, and then it's, <laughs> it's like, ah, what was that for? It's like Russian roulette. You know, you tickle its stomach, and she's like, fine, hee hee. And the next minute it's, I've got to bite your fingers off. Just looking at me lurcher. It's getting old, 12 and a quarter now. Don't know how long we got left. Walks have become sporadic. We used to do, what were we saying? We used to do like 10 miles a day. Now we're lucky if we get 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Today we had an hour's walk, but it's really slow. She's just plodding, stopping, sniffing, peeing, plodding. But uh, you've got to be careful. She's a bit of a squirrel muncher. And um, she sees a squirrel. She wants to chase it, but her body won't let her anymore. So, <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> We've got a uh, Dalmatian who's just walking past. Luna is now staring at this Dalmatian. She's probably going to go barking in a minute. Oh, the Dalmatians lay an egg. I like that expression. A dog lays an egg. <laughs> I have to pick them up. Why are you picking up all my waste? I'm putting them in the bin. Are you collecting them? Yes, we're collecting them. As, um, a couple of years ago, I was working as a uh, photographer up in London. And I did this story about as a lady 
who was um, too posh to pick up poo. So there she was um, with her, uh, she had a stroller, just a baby in this pushchair thing. And a very expensive designer pushchair it was. And she had this little cocker spaniel with her and uh, was walking along. <coughs> and this dog laid an egg. And she just sort of waited and waited and then she walked off. And I said, hoo hoo. And I got my camera out and I started taking a photograph. She said, Why are you taking a photograph? I said, you, You've got to pick your poop up. Oh no, I could never do that. And I got my press card out and said, um, Press. I'm going to do a story on you. No, you can't take photographs of me. I said, yes, I can. In the in, in public interest, I can because a press card. You know, even the police agree that you know you can do that. And uh, it, we we ran it as a too posh to pick up poo. She picked it up in the end, but it was only because we shamed her. Everyone else was, why don't you pick up your dog poo? Oh, I you know, oh I've got my I've got my gold rings on. Oh. She was literally covered in expensive things and she was just no way was she going to pick up this dog's poo until everyone around us started well, you've got to pick up your dog you can't just leave it what makes you special you know she, oh, well, mm. anyway she picked it up and put it in the bin and she was like holding it it was like the dirtiest thing in the world heaven forbid having to change her kid's nappy Ooh, I'll get the maid to do it yes i'm just watching downton oh i've got to stop doing that and uh, somebody said why are you sticking your finger in your head all the time anyway i just started watching downton again and I'm thinking I'm on series two at the moment. Uh, they're at um, it's the uh, war the, in war years, about 19, 16, 17. Bates has run off. Anyway, we'll just leave it there. Anyway, where was I going with the story? Watching Downton. Hmm. Nope, I have no idea why I said that. This is memory. My, <laughs> my memory's going. I know I was talking about it, and when I play this back, and I go, oh yeah, yeah, you've got to talk about that. But I have completely forgotten why I was talking about Downton Abbey. Nope, I for the life of me. This is the thing about getting old. Yes, I'm getting old, dog's getting old, but I've got a glass of whiskey tonight and the dog hasn't. That makes me happy and the dog sad. Oh, one year. We're sitting down the seafront and I had a pint of beer. This is at the folk festival. And I knocked the beer over, or the dog knocked it over, I can't remember. It went into my partner at the time's daughter's camera bag. There was nothing in it, it was just an empty bag. And so there was about half a pint or so of beer in this camera bag. And I turned around and my lurcher had its head in the bag. And she drank a lot of it. <laughs> and then she started getting sort of aggressive you know I had no idea she was drinking it's not like please don't say I'm giving my dog beer all the time it was just one of those things I knocked it over and when I went to get it you know there was the dog with her head in the bag drinking this beer out and uh, she got a bit aggressive to the other dogs it's like if you're walking into her I'm gonna fight you <laughs> I think she had a bit of a headache after that she, she went to sleep and she was a bit oh, don't wake me up anyway I don't like I have a friend in the States who get, always used to give her dog um, I, Pittsburgh Iron City. They used to let it go flat and then give this dog beer, which was pretty good. The dog would be sitting there with it on its legs, sort of, and then she would open the beer and pour it out, and the dog would look at it, waiting for all, all the bubbles to stop, and then it would lap it up. Strange people. I don't know if you've ever tried Iron City beer. It, it's fantastic. They have an Iron City light, which isn't fantastic. You know, everyone goes on about the calories, but they, they get rid of the calories by bringing the alcohol content down. No putting the sugar in. And it is very, it's like making love in a canoe. I'll just leave you with that one. You can work it out. It's about water and close to. Anyway, um, but the Iron City beer is fantastic. It really is good stuff. And uh, I had a couple of cans when I brought back from the States in my suitcase. And uh, I had one at Christmas a couple of years ago. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So uh, maybe I should give the dog some of that. Now, why was I talking about Downton Abbey? I was thinking about Downton. Oh, the sun's gone in. Let me just adjust that slightly. There we go. Um, so why why was I talking about Downton? I'm going to have to stop it and go back and think, why aren't I talking about Downton? I have no idea.
I got onto the subject of Downton. This is the thing about losing your mind. I had a dementia test and there's nothing wrong. No, you ask you a whole load of questions and you have to go back and tell them what you said and then they ask you a sneaky question and then go back to the one. It's like, just don't do that. I've already told you. Oh, you do remember. Yeah. It's just that I'll go upstairs and I think, what on earth have I come upstairs for? Which is different to Alzheimer's dementia. It's You're talking about going upstairs not knowing that you've gone upstairs and doing something else. So the way they used it as an analogy was if you think, well, I'm going to go upstairs and get my hairbrush. So you go upstairs and get your hairbrush. And when you're up there, you think, what did I come up here for? Hmm. And then you think for a bit and you go, oh, I know, we've got my hairbrush. With Alzheimer's, let me just change this setting again, sorry. With the old Alzheimer's, it's a case of uh, you go upstairs to get your hairbrush and then do something else because you have no idea that you were going up there to get your hairbrush and you had no idea that you've gone upstairs. It's different things, but um, sorry, it's really, the sun is playing around today. I'm going to get one of those shields up, I think. I do have one somewhere, but um, got, uh, it's got a bit eaten by moths. I used to teach photography when I was up in London. I used to teach um, people in the studio. We used to set up um, uh, three or four cam lights and then do one at a time. You bring one light on and shoot from behind you and then bring up two lights and then bring up a third line with a honeycomb and then down on top. And you know, So I used to teach photography for my sins. There was some, we had a, a lady come into the centre, into the shop, and uh, she said, um, will you, um, will you photo, can you Photoshop? I went, yeah, yeah, we can Photoshop. And she was a really round lady. Very beautiful, but quite round. And she said, can you Photoshop me thin? I said, well, we can take a bit off, but if we do that, I said, well, why do you want to do that? Well, I want to be a model, and um, I stand a better chance of getting a job if my portfolio is a... Is, but hang on a second. There are companies out there looking for plus-sized ladies and you have a beautiful face, why don't you go for that? No, 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 I want to be thin. So I said, I, I can't do that because if I give you a profile when you're a little bit, you know, I've taken some of the roundness off. I don't think I use the word roundness. I think I just said, you know, I take some of the off. And then you get an interview and you go in there and you're this size. They're not even going to look, look at you because they have... No, 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 I, I want to be thin. I want you to take some photographs and make me thin. I said, I can't do that. I said, it's just, you won't get any jobs like that. The sun's coming out again. Have I got to adjust this? It's, I've got to do the old white balance. And I forgot to do it, didn't I? This is my white balance tool. I'm just going to put that up there. There you go. I have to white balance every so often. And... Uh, I forgot to do it at the beginning, so there you go. That's a professional photographer for you. The uh, got lots of plans, as I say. I'm going off to Kennaway House this Saturday. Going to do an outside broadcast. Sunday, I'm going to take the camper out and I'm going to sit in the middle of nowhere with my camper van and watch the world go past. I like that. Get, maybe I'll get some footage for you and I'll show you what's going on. But uh, yeah, well. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week. If I can think of anything else, I'll tag it on the end. <laughs> At the moment, my um, memory cells, maybe it's the whiskey I had last night. I don't drink a lot these days. I used to drink a hell of a lot. I was talking to the doctor this week. I've got a lump in here. It's like like a little pea. Anyway, so I um, went to the doctor. And he says, how much do you drink? And I said, not a lot these days. I don't drink Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and I only drink about this much. Um, and she said, well, okay. But I used to drink about 100 units a week when I was up in London. PA 28 going past. Flown one of those. Anyway, when I was up in London working for the, some of the big banks, worked for Credit Suisse and JP Morgan, UBS Warburg, you were constantly on the piss. And it was just one of those things, you were just drinking all the time, the whole culture was drinking. Um, which was a bit of a pain. 
and I think I was up to about 100 units a week for a good, I don't know, four years. It wasn't good for the old, um, but um, I've calmed down a bit now. Uh, I don't drink Januaries, no, no drinking in Januaries, um, and uh, I only drink Thursday, Friday and Saturday, and tiny, tiny amount on Sunday, just a nip. Feeling much better, it's the sleep, you've got to get some sleep. And I wasn't sleeping a lot, so anyway, see you when I see you. Tally-ho.